This week we're saying it like it is in Straight Talk in Yorkshire. I hate it. It's not worth the money. This uh, viewing is obviously going spectacularly badly. Tackling the tricky issues. Why don't I um, take and show you the bedroom? See if you're underwhelmed. A bit smaller than I was expecting. Yes. Dealing with disharmony. No more pay for your target as well. <laughs> yeah, but look past that. Do you think Relate would give me a job? We have a plan, but we're going to have to be very hands-on. Relax the shoulders. <laughs> it's OK. This week, we're in God's own country. We've come to Britain's biggest county, Yorkshire, where the scenery is breathtaking and the cyclists rule. And we're finding houses in a market that's had more ups and downs than the Yorkshire Dales. It's quite the challenge. Yorkshire has got an international reputation for its natural beauty, historic cities and vibrant culture. All this and house prices are still 35% below the national average, but people are wising up to the charms of living here and consequently prices are galloping northwards and showing no signs of slacking off. There's been a 7% rise in the last 12 months. Our first set of house hunters, a property virgin, Sammy Ashton, a senior marketing executive, and her partner, Tom West, a management accountant at Leeds United. To say they've got their life mapped out would be an understatement. The plan going forward before I'm 35, we'll have a house. Once we've got the house in place, eventually, then the rest of the plan can get underway, get a ring on it. Yep. <laughs> Beyonce has arrived in Yorkshire. For the last 12 months, they've been living in a rented house in Calverley, an upmarket suburb of Leeds and the area they want to stay in. They couldn't afford to buy it, but this is exactly the kind of house they want. Well, almost. But a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> With space for a kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> and our own garden. So far, yeah. they've viewed over 20 properties, a number of which Sammy would have bought, but Tom rejected all of them. The master plan is stuck at stage one. I prioritise space, whereas Tom prioritises looks. He's a snob. But you don't want an ugly house with ugly inside that's just matter that you can hide loads of stuff. <laughs> Time for me to play mediator, I think. I tell you, I am a little bit worried that your budget is 175 in this area. You're already living in this area, renting a house that's worth around 200,000 that yeah. doesn't deliver an awful lot of the things that you're trying to buy. I feel like we need to get real and compromise. Yeah, that's it. But... Whereas I still feel there's, that there is that perfect house. The, the well, way... I, mean, I think you're absolutely right, Sammy. If you're looking in a fairly defined area and you've seen 20 houses, you really should know what's achievable and what isn't. Mm. <laughs> you know, the housing stock yeah. doesn't vary that much. Yeah, hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I think if anyone's going to be compromising, it will inevitably be me. But. You're just delaying that moment for as long as yeah, possible. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. holding out to find that one house that we don't, don't have, have to. to. <laughs> okay. Go easy on him, Phil. Well, that all depends. Sammy and Tom have got £175,000 to buy their first property. They're looking, ideally, for three bedrooms, a big kitchen diner with space for a six-seater table and a garden. For Tom, curb appeal is crucial, whereas Sammy is more fixated on space. We'll be searching within a very compact three-mile radius of their favourite location, Calverley, so it doesn't give me a lot to choose from. Our other set of house hunters are newlyweds, Graham Lowe, an IT manager, and his wife, Anna Williams, a forensic anthropologist. It's Anna's work that's prompted the move from Oxfordshire to Yorkshire. We thought it's going to be a lot cheaper, um, money would go a lot further. So we had visions of the beautiful barn on the moors that are that we could get for cheapest chips. But with a £250,000 budget, they now realise that many properties up here are off the menu. We've been looking for a house for about eight months now. I think we visited 50 houses and we are really, really fed up. I think we're incredibly fussy. Very fussy. <laughs> yeah. Not only have their dreams been shattered by the reality of the Yorkshire market, they also lack confidence. Two cream teas. Graham lost money on a place he owned a few years ago, and Anna is a nervous first-time buyer. So currently they're renting, but ready to take the plunge. I'm very scared. I have palpitations about having a mortgage. And what's making me feel a bit unwell is that they don't want to play safe. 
they're looking to take on a large property with enough space to fully indulge in their hobbies. With Anna, it's all about collecting crockery and baking. Whilst Graham wants a room for his model making, and still more space is needed outdoors to keep their dog, Lucky, barking up the right tree. I want the big house I would like. A big garage, big man cave, big office area would be nice working from home. They've got an eye on rural areas in the south and west of the county, close to the Peak District. But with a limited budget for this area, they're wanting to have their cake and eat it. I want to help them get that idyllic Yorkshire life they've been dreaming of. But first of all, there are some issues of focus and nervousness to fettle. What do you think is at the heart of that nerves? I am incredibly risk averse and this is all my savings going into the deposit. That scares me, that doesn't leave me with the safety buffer that I'm used to. I dread the day when someone rings me up and says the house that you advised me to buy is worth less, has fallen into the ground and touch wood so far that hasn't happened. There is a degree of trust. Well, I certainly feel that I need someone to take me by the hand through this process. What are your top three? I can't live with that. It's got to have a lot of space. Um, Off-road parking is yeah. an absolute must for me, and it's got to have the broadband. That is a true male list. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's got to look good. Right. Nice area. Yes. Countryside. Right. Altogether, a very ambitious wish list for the money. They're making me nervous now. With a maximum spend of £250,000, they want a minimum of three big bedrooms to incorporate a big office. Graham wants a big kitchen and a big garden. Spot the theme? For Anna, it's all about curb appeal and countryside. And in principle, they don't mind a bit of a project. Anna needs to be within an hour's commute of Huddersfield for work, and they both want to be close to the Peak District. So I'll be looking as far north of the county as Almondbury, and as far south as Stocksbridge. Morning. How'd you get on with Graham and Anna then? Oh, you start. <laughs> oh, come on, it can't be that bad. Well, Anna is very risk averse. Mm. And I think he is quite picky. Fuse angelic night, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. How'd it go for you? Well, I'm a little bit worried. I'm looking for two different things. And every time she says something positive about a house, he finds something negative, and they're just kind of moving in a different direction. So they kind of, they, they need a... Do you think Relate would give me a job? Uh, they'd probably give us a, they'd give us think, both a job. I think they'd give us a job. I'd, I'd make a good marriage counsellor. I'll remind you of that next time you disagree with me. Anyway, back to the job in hand. We need to find Graham and Anna, their corner of Yorkshire. With their list of requirements, I don't think it's going to be easy. Deep breath, I'm going in. We're kicking off in Thurlston, a lovely little village on the edge of the peaks. With rolling hills and reservoirs, it's perfect dog walking country. The house I'm going to show them offers a safe option for Anna with her mortgage phobia, as it's significantly under budget, yet on paper delivers pretty much all of their criteria. I'm feeling quietly confident. The look of somewhere is important, yeah. isn't it? I quite like it. I quite like the porch. I like yeah. the colour of the door. Yeah. Graham, what is that? That's an off-road parking space. That is an off-road parking space. First prize for that man. I'm a little bit worried by the size. It looks a bit small. Right. But you're happy to go in and mm -hmm. have a look? Yeah. Keen. Brilliant. Yep. Keen. Oh, keen, that's what I like. I want to work out exactly what these two mean when they say small. One man's pile might be another man's potting shed. This place has a lovely kitchen diner and sitting room that opens directly onto the garden. It is on two levels, but still perfectly usable. Upstairs, there are two double bedrooms and a huge attic room for work and hobbies. It's in great nick, and best of all, a substantial 75 grand under budget at £174,950. Ooh. Nice. Nice yeah. kitchen. It's a very big kitchen. It's very high. It's ceiling height. It's lovely. Now, this is another big room. They've got a wood-burning stove in there. Yeah. Is it I'm just a wondering little if we bit could, small? We could oh. fit all of our furniture in here. We'll probably get sofas mm, in. You might not have to fit all of your furniture in here. Okay. okay. Because if this room isn't big enough, I've got a bigger one at the top of the house. <laughs> Aha! Wow. I could, could have could an office here. Study. 
You can have one side, I can have one side. Yeah. It's essentially, as far as I'm concerned, from your perspective, a two reception room house. How much does it cost? £175,000. Right, OK. So we um, don't have to make yeah. that scary leap. No, it's got compromises. You'll find the compromises are not in the bedrooms. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you might not think there's compromise in the bedrooms, Kirsty, but with these two we know bigger is better. Like the floor. Yeah. Mm, it's a bit It's a little small. bit it's a little bit dark. I'd, I'd say it could have been a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, I think ideally we'd like an ensuite, wouldn't we? I don't think they're gonna go for it. I think they can't see the relationship between the compromises and the fact that this is £75,000 less than their budget. For me, it's a no-brainer. But for them, I think they want more. I don't know if it's got a lot of space for us to grow into, like... Oh, I think we'd fill it straight away. Yeah. And then, if we got a bigger dog... If there's a dog too big for this place, I'd hate to meet it. Final thoughts? Don't think there'd be enough room. I in think we just fill this house immediately. Even but get rid of some what stuff. What with? Because you're not going to fill it with you and no. the dog. All our junk. If it's junk, why are you putting it somewhere? Because this is a two bedroom house with an office, so it's effectively a five roomed house. And it's on £175,000. So that's £35,000 per room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if even one of those rooms is for storage. That's fiscal insanity. So we're saying goodbye to this house. Yeah. If this place is not big enough for them, I think we can safely say this is not going to be an easy journey. Want my advice? Well, in Yorkshire, run for the hills. This week, we're in Yorkshire. My couple, Graham and Anna, have moved north hoping for a country pile. The reality is a rude awakening. And my couple, Sammy and Tom, have fallen for each other, but are falling out when house hunting. Don't know anyone who does that. Nope, me neither. The first house I showed Graham and Anna in Thelston left them wanting more. More space, that is. Which I've now got to try and deliver. As for first-time buyers Sammy and Tom, their life plan of house, marriage and children has stalled because of Tom's refusal to compromise when it comes to finding his perfect house. They've got a £175,000 budget and it's my job to make it all happen. Just want it to end. Just want to buy a house, move in, be happy. <laughs> the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude. <laughs> They love upmarket Calverley, where they're currently renting, but average house prices are 220,000 pounds, 45 grand more than they've got. But against the odds, I've managed to find a stylish place within budget, but will it be stylish enough for ultra picky Tom? Right, well, here's the first one I've got for you, right in the target zone of Calverley. Yep, right in the centre of the village. I would classify this as, as best of its breed. It's perfect location, I think. It's uh, exactly where we want to be. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The uh, house looks fantastic from the outside. It's exactly what I was looking for, a winner Happy. at the moment. Yep. Yep. Come on, then. <laughs> so am I. This place is in mint move-in condition. It has the spacious rooms that Sammy was after, with the decor and feel I think Tom's been holding out for and on both of their lists, a large kitchen diner with space for a table. There are only two bedrooms, not the preferred three, but potential in the loft should a later stage of their life plan involve a family. The garden is small, verging on the petite, but there is a park nearby. It's at the top of their budget at £175,000. It's an old house, but it's been modernised well, so it's completely ready to go. Yeah, yeah. perfect. You've got the ceiling height, you've got the fireplace. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. really like it, actually. I yeah. really like it, yeah. Got some original features, but still yeah. modern. And it's big enough as well space. for yeah. The key element of your um, search brief involved the kitchen, didn't it? It did, yeah. Ta-da! Wow. Perfect. <laughs> the six-seater wow. dining table. Yes. I thought, is this going to be a compromise on kitchen space in this house looking from the outside? But no, that's perfect. Yeah. A really nice kitchen. Good. I think I'm breaking new ground with Tom, heading to the first floor and no negatives. That master bedroom to the front. Love yeah. this room. It's... Really like this room. How does this compare to where you are now? Slightly, Slightly smaller, smaller, but still a good size very from what good we've size. seen. You've also got 
walk-in wardrobe with yeah, window. Like that. Yeah. That is a very natural place to put stairs up to the loft. Yeah. And just if you look down the street, most of the houses down here have extended into the loft. Oh, yeah. So it's absolutely good potential for doing that. Yeah. Really Tommy, you're looking a slightly frightened man at this yeah, point. I, know, I, I can't believe that we've, we've not. <laughs> can't believe that we're satisfying Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's fantastic. I can't believe it. It's just not usually the case when we walk around a house. This is the first time I've heard this. Yeah. Oh, no, he's going to be insufferable now. This is going far better than they expected. <laughs> I knew, of course, that it was a good one. This is nice as well. Yeah. Fine, perfectly fine for a guest room. Almost too perfect to be true. There's got to be something wrong with it. No, don't think that it. way. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tom, he struggles with positivity. Maybe the undersized garden will make him feel more comfortable. Now, hopefully this qualifies as a garden, or is it more of a yard? <laughs> this is no, fine. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted low maintenance. Is there anything that troubles you so far? The only thing that doesn't take it is a third bedroom, but as you said, there's loft conversions. Mm -hmm. The parking might sometimes be a pain. Because you've got the park, it's not like there's two sides of houses and everyone's got a car. Mm. You've only yeah. got one side. Yeah, that's true. true yeah. So if anywhere, yeah. if you're going to be this close to the centre of the village, it's, it's quite a good one. Yeah. Sammy and Tom are clearly impressed, but if they do want that third bedroom without doing the work, we're not going to find it in their dream spot. Back with Graham and Anna, I have to say I'm pretty hopeful about the second property I've got lined up. It's in the village of Flockton, a bit further away from the peaks, but nearer to Anna's work and surrounded by rolling fields and farmland to keep their beloved pooch happy. They've said they want more space for their hobbies and junk, and this house delivers it, but at a cost. It is 75 grand more than the previous property. So, public footpath, public byway, public byway. So we're surrounded by dog walking. Lovely. Um, and we're looking at this house. It looks nice. It looks very similar to the last house. Very similar. <laughs> it is bigger than the last house, okay. by quite a lot. OK. The front porch looks nice. Yeah. Right. And I like the bricks. Right, should we get in? Let's go in, yeah. Right. So far, so good. But I think it's the roomy inside that will really sell this place. There's a large sitting room, huge country-style kitchen diner, three bedrooms on the first floor and a fourth in the attic, which they could use as their office. I really can't see space being an issue this time around. There's also a very useful cellar and a large garden for Lucky the dog. To get all this, we've had to take them to the very top of their budget. This place is on the market at offers in the region of £249,995. Oh, look at the kitchen. Nice. It's looking good so far. <laughs> that's a nice cooker. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. This would not necessarily stay. <laughs> and I have seen people blow deals over cookers. <laughs> if they want to leave it, fine. If they don't want to leave it, buy another one. Yeah. Okay, very Absolutely. nice. Yeah, quite like it. to see the garden. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a big thumbs up. Yeah. I like these speedy viewings. And no, it's not so I can go home earlier. After all, too much thinking and not enough feeling makes Jack a dull house hunter. This is a right of way. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, so that all okay. the coal could be dropped off and the pigs picked up. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, and that's yours. Yep. I think you probably would want to fence it. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. especially because of the dog. Yeah. Yes. W what I really like is how peaceful this garden is out here and just how many trees and fields and everything you can see. I like the yeah. ruralness. So far, no negatives have been raised. And if they think the bedrooms deliver, this place could be a strong contender. Oh, that's a good size. Oh. That's, that's nice a big bedroom. And big. The three bedrooms are all a decent size, and the loft, surely a lovely bonus. Oh. OK. Oh, it's a little bit smaller than I was expecting. Yes, it is. With no views. No. This is a bit of a disappointment. They seem to like everything but the loft. Now it looks like they're put off completely. Oh, you're looking disappointed. Does it yes. show on my face? It does much? show on your face. <laughs> what, what went wrong? Uh, it was all great until we reached the, the office, I, I suppose well, you call it. It was a loft room and it was just tiny. You couldn't have one of the other bedrooms as the office? Well, we could, then the loft room would be the spare room. I, I would certainly like a bigger house. 
Right. I, I would probably sacrifice how rural this is, be a bit more semi-rural. Listen, we have more houses to see, but what I really want you to do this evening mm -hmm. is to think about which rooms are most important to you and what you do in them. That is your homework. Graham, are you good at homework? Not generally, no. no me neither. <laughs> I will be hoping to give out gold stars tomorrow, or there'll be trouble. Back with Sammy and Tom, and I don't mean to gloat, Kirsty, but we're in a great position. One house in the bag, allowing us to take a more creative route. He does mean to gloat. We're staying in their beloved Calverley, but this time nearer the edge of the village. The house I've lined up is well below their budget, so they'll have money to style it up for Tom and give Sammy the space she wants by building an extension, resulting in a house that would more than match the first one. It's a 1950s built house. Yep. Uh, you've got the location, you've got the setting, just a different style. Yeah. She's not feeling me as much as the last one did. <laughs> Pretty garden, but not as nice looking house. But it is a lot cheaper. Well, yeah. yeah. I would imagine that this might be a bit more spacious. Mm -hmm. um, which <laughs> what you're looking for. Appeals to me. Yeah. We're currently down on curb appeal, but we're up on potential. The sitting room and kitchen diner are a decent size, as are the two double bedrooms, and there's a well kept garden. But the real appeal is the price £149,995, 25 grand under budget. And with the right attitude, they could do a lot with that money. Now, um, it, it's dated. Yep. It's perfectly clean and tidy and livable and comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's just of its age. All mm -hmm. cosmetics, quite easy to do, mm -hmm. but you're going to need a bit of imagination, a bit of vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound very convinced. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I can picture it. Yeah, I hate the fireplace, but I know you could take, get rid of that, but... The wallpaper's horrible as well. <laughs> yeah, but look past that. Yeah, I know. But it's achievable and it's doable within budget. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think And so. you probably make money on the way through, so well, you know, there's lots yeah, of reasons yeah. to, yeah. you know, keep that mind open. True. But with eyes for just one house, will Tom be able to see the potential in this one? So try not to be put off by the things that won't be here when the house is sold. Yeah. You know, all this kind of, well, it, yes. it dates it. With your personality and your bits and pieces, would modernise it. Yeah. But the real opportunity is out the back. OK. Right. To open all of this out, you could really do something quite impressive out there. OK. Mm -hmm. For a minimum of 15 grand, they could build a single-storey extension, which would give them a bigger kitchen diner or future playroom. It's not complicated work, and because they'd be extending within their permitted development, they wouldn't need planning permission but they would need to show a bit more enthusiasm. This is interesting decor. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, Good spacious room, though. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this house. Ah, uh, well, this uh, viewing is obviously going spectacularly badly. Perfectly good house, a good price, lots of opportunity, and they really haven't given it the time of day whatsoever. Um, yeah, this room's all right. Probably the only one that I wouldn't have to do something with immediately. Yeah. Fortunate it's the spare room. Yeah. The writing's on the wall. This place just doesn't match up to property one. You actually need to love the house and its position and everything about it yep. if you're going to roll your sleeves up yeah. and, 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 and tackle it. Yeah. And I, I don't think I never no. got <laughs> No, I don't no, think. No, we, we don't just... love the exact location in the village. We don't, we don't love, love the, the house. house on the outside. Or the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not on the inside. <laughs> Must do better next time, Phil. May I remind you, you're not exactly top of the class yourself at the moment, Kirsty. I'm in Yorkshire with Sammy and Tom, and after a history of Tom rejecting over 20 houses, I've shown them this, that they both like. And it doesn't end there. I've got an absolute beaut waiting in the wings. Whereas I'm forced to admit I'm lagging behind with Anna and Graham's search. So, do you trust me? Implicitly. Absolutely. Glad to hear it. Yes, I'm changing my approach. The first two properties we saw were in plum areas, but Graham and Anna felt they were too small. Our next house is in Stocksbridge, and to be honest, it's a bit of a risk. It's not necessarily the location they were looking for, but they wanted a super-sized house, and we found one. So it's a semi 
it's it, this is the garden. This is all. This all comes with the house. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's farmhousey. Really like the look of that. Anna and Graham would need to take a bravery pill, as this place requires guts. It's a big project, but it could be amazing, and it's over twice the size of the places we've seen so far. It's currently split into two separate flats, so room configurations require a bit of imagination. On the ground floor, there's a large living room, a kitchen, a dining room and a bathroom. Whilst upstairs, there are three big bedrooms and another kitchen. The garden is charming and there are various outbuildings for hobby stuff and storage. But what about its position? Didn't like the area very much. It's not a rough area, it's just not such a sort of a market area. It stands to reason, isn't it? It's 450 grand's worth of house <laughs> and it's 250 grand. Yeah. It's right at the top of their budget, but we've heard there's a deal to be done, which is lucky because that extra cash will have to pay for the work. Here you have your drawing room. Ooh. That's grand. <laughs> Every room has a project. Mm -hmm. Every part of the house has something you have to do to it. I right. love it. I love it. <sighs> Big enough. Well, That's plenty of places to store things. There's masses. Yes, I do not want you to buy this house and just store a whole <laughs> lot of junk in it. Still, it's nice to see Anna smiling. It's hard not to get wooed by the available space, but I want to make sure they understand the work involved in making this place beautiful. For example, I think the kitchen would be better moved to the front of the house where the dining room currently is, because then they'd get a lovely view of the garden. We live with this myth that a kitchen is a kitchen because it has a kitchen in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in fact, a kitchen is no different from any other room when you start from, when you start from scratch. I'm a bit daunted about the idea of sticking a kitchen in here from scratch. I, I think it would be OK. I've done it three times now. I've moved three kitchens. And actually, it's really easy. We knew this place would push Anna out of her comfort zone, but I am surprised that Graham isn't at all phased by the level of work. I hope he's not just blinded by the size. This is your suite. Yeah. So you have bathroom, dressing room, master bed. Weirdly, I think you would have this as a study. Library type thing with... Library yeah. type study room. Big old desk with a green leather. And the opening globe with the drinks inside, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot to think about. Do you want me to leave you to wander around? Yes, please. Okie dokie. I think Anna's actually starting to picture herself here. Who'd have thought it? So, one day along comes a client who's super risk averse. And you decide to show them a really big property, which could be a massive money pit. And then blow me down with a feather. They love it. They're not frightened oh. by it. There is no predicting it. Isn't yeah. it lovely and light and airy? Yeah, just gorgeous. Ah, the sweet sound of happy house hunters in their natural surroundings. What do you think? You've done your job, I think. Mm. It's a life's work. You'd be in there day in, day out. You'd never have another foreign holiday. You'd be freezing cold for the first 18 months. I personally wouldn't let that worry me. But I am just looking at you particularly, mm -hmm. the one that is risk averse. Yes. We need to let, you know, our hearts cool down a bit and yep. think about it with our heads Take for a bit. Take a deep breath. I'm thrilled that they can see the potential. I feel like rolling up my sleeves and getting started on that kitchen right now. I think the current owners might have something to say about that. Plus, Graham and Anna need to sit down and think about whether they have the stamina for a project this size. Back with Sammy and Tom, and Kirsty's joined me in a suburb of Leeds five minutes down the road from their beloved Calverley. We're in their number two spot, Farsley. Round here, the houses are still lovely, but they get more for their budget of £175,000. They want us to find them a smart, move-in, three-bedroom house, and look what we have here. What are your thoughts, Mr Curb Appeal? It, it looks good. It's kind of on the outskirts of Farsley. Definitely. Hang good on, we're being it? filmed twice here. This isn't fair. No, we've never had anyone who's taller than you before, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I could always lend you some shoes, Phil. Uh, no thanks. We reverted back to the style of the first house, which we know got the thumbs up from Sammy and Tom. But this one is future-proof. 
unlike the first property. This time we've got a third bedroom and a big garden. The kitchen's a bit smaller, but you've got a separate dining room that would comfortably fit a six-seater table. It's being marketed at £179,995, so five grand over their budget. But we've had word from the owner that a deal could be done. So, what we've got here is front room, good size, and then lovely dining sitting room. I do prefer a dining kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, you could open it up. A small kitchen, but yeah, you could open it up. What are you feeling now? Underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. Yep, I agree. But why don't I um, take and show you the bedrooms? Okay. And um, see if you're underwhelmed. Can I underwhelm you in the garden? <laughs> you can. <laughs> I've got the better bet, Kirsty. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do in the outdoors, Phil. I'll just assume she's talking about her allotment. Space was always top of Sammy's list, and I do think the bedrooms here have the kind of scale that she was looking for. Yeah, I like the bedrooms. Mm. Bedrooms are good. Just kind of take your mind back to house number one mm. and the potential for the loft there. You might end up with something like this. Alternatively, pick up this house for a similarish price with the third bedroom already, already existing. Yeah, pros and cons. Mm. Mm. Uh, what I'm thinking now is, is the scope to extend the kitchen and make a big kitchen diner. Yeah. Who is the keen cook? Sammy. But I think neither of us want to be in the kitchen for a long period of time cooking. Right. Unless people could sit down, have a chat with us whilst, whilst we are cooking. Which that isn't. Which that isn't, no. It's a big no. It's a big no. Yeah, the kitchen's... Unless we could extend it out and then take the wall out here and you'd have a kitchen diner, I don't Would think Would you it's... want to spend fifteen to £30,000 on doing that? Not unless it was going to make me forty-five to sixty on the value of the house. That's a bit ambitious, Kirsty. But I think the main problem is that nothing's cutting it quite like the first house I showed them. You've got a comfy spot out here. Very comfy spot. It was sunny a minute ago. Yeah. Well, what are you saying? And then I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> it all went dull and dark. Um, that is a sensible young man. Yep. And um, you found them the first house. Made it look easy, didn't I? You did make it look easy. I'm hoping they'll go back to it and um, he might actually get a bit, a bit excited. He wasn't excited first time. He was really? nervous, really nervous. Because it was right? Yeah. Makes me nervous when you're right to be dead on. <laughs> Hi, you two. Hello. Have you seen enough? Yeah. I've seen it all. I think so, yeah. 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 Were the bedrooms big enough, Tom, to swing you on the kitchen? No. No, no not at all. Maybe it would be a good idea if we went back to house number one and just really thought about the loft and the yeah. ability to yeah. create a third bedroom. Yeah, I think that would be good. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. clearly Phil has done a brilliant job <laughs> and um, I can, I can I leave you with surprised. him. Don't surprised. <laughs> so I see you've become all benevolent, Kirsty. now you've found Graham and Anna a house. And what a house it is. I could have left it there, but I can't resist one more roll of the dice. Anna and Graham's dream was a detached house in a rural setting with spectacular views. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much what we've found them here and within budget. This one is in Kirk Heaton. It needs renovating. It's a bit of a gamble. But please, once more for that view. If I'm totally honest, 100% honest, uh, need. the view is a bit too urban. It's too urban. Okie doke. I'm, so I'm not absolutely blown away by, oh my god, what right. a gorgeous view. Okie doke. Because we're seeing tops of houses. Right, okay. The odds are not looking as promising as they were five minutes ago. This is the only detached house I've managed to find them, and it's a decent size with two reception rooms and three bedrooms. There's a large attic that could be converted into an office. Yes, the decor is a bit dated, but if they were up for the last house, the work here by comparison is small fry. It's just under budget at £249,995 and there may be a bit of flexibility in the price. But this place is all about the view and if it doesn't do it for them, the house is unlikely to sway them. So I'm going to send them in on their own. Something tells me it's not going to be a long viewing. Go in there and you'll, sit, you'll see me sitting on the fence. That'll be a first. All right, Phil, I'll stand on a wall and prepare to jump. Ooh. That's a small kitchen. 
we'd have to... That's a very small kitchen. ...start from scratch. Right? And a very large hallway. Oh, it's quite big up here, actually. Ooh, teeny weeny. I really think this has does have potential, and I genuinely think this is a lovely view. But it's not me, it's not my money. I don't think there's any point in pretending I'm not. Yeah, that I'm we're not. interested. I'm, not. I'm going to ask the question, but I know the answer. Um, what did you think? Hate it. It's got a tiny kitchen, tiny bathroom, mm -hmm. horrible decor that we'd have to rip out, and it's not worth the money, in my opinion. That is succinct. So we will draw a veil over house number four, and we will pretend that we've seen three houses. <laughs> OK. Such is the nature of gambling. If they'd fallen in love with the view, this could have been a very different story. As for Sammy and Tom, it's no surprise that they want to take another look at the two-bedroom terrace in Calverley, top of budget at £175,000. For this house to work long term, they need a third bedroom, and that means converting the loft. So we've spoken to the people next door who are in the process of doing this and got some figures that should help. In order to get a staircase up into the loft that would satisfy building regulations and all of that, about ten to 13000 and that's with Velux windows either side. No need for planning. You do need building regulation control. Right. Um, and that would be a complete uh, insulation and all the boards and yes. like fostering and yep, all, all of that. it. If you went down the dormer option, it would be a much better room. Yep. If you got planning permission, mm -hmm. cost of that between fifteen and eighteen. Yeah. That's a lot that's... on to the cost. We'd probably put fifteen to twenty on the value of the house. But doing this kind of work, uh, in my thoughts, it's not so much about making money, it's about making sure that you can stay in the house longer. Yep. Yeah. So you can have children, you have a couple of children. Yeah. Yeah. The average cost of moving house is approximately eight yeah. grand, so it makes sense to do it as infrequently as possible. And this place could certainly see them through the next ten years of their plan. Bathroom's fine for now. Yeah, I think it's Small people that, that live here, yeah. Yeah. don't yeah. think we'll get our heads under the shower. <laughs> They've seen over 20 properties now. This one is a winner. I just hope they go for it. Oh, I think I might take a load off. Relax. I think of poor old Kirst who got the short straw this week. It's high time that happened as well. I'll thank you to keep your short straw to yourself, Phil. There's loads of space, isn't there? Yeah. Everything OK? Getting very real. It's okay. getting very real. You look as though you've seen a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're freaking out. <laughs> They want this house, but tread carefully, Phil. First-time buyers are easily spooked. Sammy and Tom have overcome their first-time fears and are keen to try and secure the two-bedroom house in Calverley. Whereas Anna and Graham have yet to make a decision. They're meeting me at the beautiful property in Stocksbridge, top of the budget at £250,000. One of their main concerns was the cost of doing all the work. Um, lift up the carpet, sand the floors, uh -huh. paint the walls, take off the wallpaper. Put wood burner in. Their other concern is what it's like to live in this town. So while they carry on with their list of renovation priorities, yep. I'm off to find a neighbour to help reassure them about the area. We're going to need to put central heating in, so we need to know that. Um, rough costs of rewiring, I think. I'm Kirsty. Brenda lives next door, and she's lived in Stocksbridge for most of her life. There you are. Hi. This uh, is Brenda. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Is that your list? We've got a list. Okie dokie. I will take that, and I will leave you with Brenda. You'll answer any question, oh, won't I you, Brenda? I will. I will, if <laughs> I can. I think she'll ask them quite yes. directly. See you in a bit. I'm particularly interested in knowing if, it's, if you feel safe around here, what's it like at night? Very safe. You don't hear anything or see anyone. No one comes along. Right, okay, no. so it's really quiet. No. Meanwhile, I'm safe outside getting some quotes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll put that down. But yes. Great, thanks for your help. Bye. It's well within walking distance to get onto the moors. And if you've got a dog, it will need walking. <laughs> it so. will. It will yes. need walking, yeah. Yes. They gave me a list. I've got one in return. Ballpark figures, obviously. 
New central heating, 10 grand. Rewiring, two and a half. Moving and refitting the kitchen, four grand. Bathroom, 5,000. Contingency, 20%. Call that 26 grand for the essentials. Anything else they can do themselves. End result, amazing. Oh, everyone done? Yeah, I yes. think so. Definitely, Definitely reassured. reassured. Really right, good. Right, well, I think we need to go and have a sit down. And Brenda, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Thank you, you so much. much. Very good. I can't quite believe it's falling into place. Back with Sammy and Tom, and they're all G'd up too and about to make an offer. The asking price on the Calverley House is top of budget, £175,000. My feeling is to go in lower and try and negotiate that dining table into the deal as well. Call it a housewarming present. I generally don't think they'd sell it to you for less than 170. That's not to say that we shouldn't try. So would you go with a size of maybe a 168, yeah. 500? As an opening offer. Hi, Michelle. Phil Spencer. We've just had our second viewing, um, and I'm pleased to say that um, uh, the couple really like it. I've got an offer for you. They're first-time buyers, so there genuinely would be no delay. Uh, the offer is 168500 Thanks, Michelle. Bye. She's going to try and get hold of them right, right away and ring, ring me back. Fantastic. OK. Thank you. As for Graham and Anna, after eight months of searching for the holy grail of properties, it's amazing that we're actually sitting here talking about a house that could be the one. The garden is spectacular, the house is spectacular, and in six years' time, there's going to be one evening when you're going to look at each other and go, it's done. I think in order to have the motivation to do the project, you've got to really love it and really have the vision. You've got to really love it. And that number three is the only one that's come close to me wanting to even pick up a paintbrush, mm -hmm. really. The vendor would probably accept 2.30, um, but there is another interested party who the agent believes is on the verge of offering about 2.25. I wouldn't want to go over 2.20. I certainly would max out at 2.30. <laughs> dare I say, and you can hit me if you like, dare I say I thought it may be even a little bit too big. I'm not I'm a... any. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was a li little bit worried about things like running costs. Yep. Um, it's not in our ideal location, but so, you, you didn't so, notice So anything. you're not passionate about it? I'm the... not passionate about it, no. But okay. I, I, I even... would probably enjoy living there. I would not even consider going into that house unless you were both passionate about it. I'm just going to cry. Don't, don't, look in the sky. Look in the sky, look in the sky. I just fell in love with that house. But were you passionate about it? Yeah, same thing. I don't feel we're entirely done with this house. I think you two do have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that a big house project is a new idea for them, so it's only right that they take their time. But it's a great place, and I'd be thrilled to make an offer on it for them. As for Sammy and Tom, the vendors have rejected our offer of 168,500, so we've upped it to 170,000 pounds. They're being very, <laughs> really. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. That was very speedy. OK. Michelle, terrific news. Thank you very much. Fantastic. 170 accepted to include the table. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> we did it. Cheers. You did Thank it. You. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Your own piece of England. Your own home. Our first home. Even Tom's well enough. <laughs> How are you doing, Tom? <laughs> just thinking about the money we just bought. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, you. Great. Many congratulations. Thank you, Phil. Thank you well much. done. Cheers. Cheers. But for Graham and Anna, the celebratory beer is on hold. I feel for Anna. She really wanted that Stocksbridge house, but they decided it wasn't a good idea. Another buyer stepped in and paid the full asking price. They've concluded that a big project is not for them. 
but they're more open-minded about where they live and their search continues. On a more joyous note, for Sammy and Tom, all the paperwork's been going through and they should be in that beautiful Calverly house within the next few weeks. Tom held out for the one and, to his credit, he got it. I'm really looking forward to earning our new home together. In the end, we've got everything that we want, pretty much. Five-year plan has been put into action now. After years of renting, the thought of being able to do whatever they want to their own home is an exciting prospect. Every day, think about what furniture we're going to buy, what we'll do with the kitchen, the bathroom, where's Tom going to put his clothes, so we need to get Tom a wardrobe to go in the spare bedroom to put his stuff in. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I've navigated already. <laughs> not even moved in yet. We got the house for a good price, but Tom hasn't quite recovered from writing out the biggest cheque of his life. And, of course, there's the next stage of that five-year plan. Save up again for a wedding. <laughs> Yeah. Um... That laugh conversion, then kids. <laughs> <laughs> At least now he's got a threshold to carry her over.